So we knew what store it was, the number, and you watch that to see when they're coming out. And you just parked here for a day or two to see who's coming and going. Hi, I'm Larry Lawton, America's biggest jewel dealer. Join me as I walk you through my past robberies, how I planned them, executed them, and ultimately got caught. I'm gonna show you how we did things in prison, like making a tattoo gun, making wine, making white lightning. It's gonna be very educational. These are the untold stories. Hey everyone, here I am, Larry Lawton for another edition of Untold Stories. Uh, this is gonna be another good one. This is, I am in the plaza of my first jewelry robbery, which is actually a setup. It's pretty busy here right now. I'm in a busy plaza and I'm gonna show you the plaza and why I robbed here and why the setup had to be exactly like a real robbery. And uh, this is what, how I used to do it too. But before I even get started with that, please check out my member program right on Patreon. It's Larry Lawton, Jewel Thief. Also right here, you join YouTube. And also please join Larry Lawton's action crew because we're making a difference. You know, uh, I'd rather do these videos to show people it's not worth it because of the time I spent away. Again, it's, I don't know, 100, 100 degrees here in Florida. I'm in the middle of the sun and I had to come down here on a nice day. I tried to do this one time a week or two ago and it was raining, so I couldn't do what I'm doing. As you can see, it's a plaza and that's the, the number one reason. As you can see right here, most of these plazas are anchored. See, that's a Publix, it's a big Publix and it's easy to, to case a store here because if you're sitting in a parking lot right here watching who is coming and going, nobody's gonna even think twice about it because they don't know if your wife is inside shopping or wherever they are or like I said along any of these shops see these shops going I'm, I'm showing you shops up and down well as you can see I am literally in front of the barbershop which used to be that barbershop used to be the jewelry store as you can see you can, can't see in even in the morning when the sun would be totally down hitting into that glass you couldn't see in it a little bit not even a little bit so it was perfect because the sun would be glaring off of the glass and this way anybody who walks by literally couldn't see you if they drove by they can't look in that shop you could barely look in there now and the sun is going up it's a little later in the afternoon it's two o'clock but in the morning when the sun was over on the other side it would be hitting that glass and you couldn't see in there and that was one of the the keys and what did i do that for I did that because I wanted to watch who's coming, when they're coming, what time the mailman is coming, how much traffic is in there, does he get deliveries, there's a certain time. So when you case a store, you literally got to case it. Now this one was a little different because they knew we'd get robbed, but their employee didn't know. I knew there'd be one person in there, there was going to be no one in the back, I knew all of that, but couldn't know when, the guy couldn't know when, nobody could know when, and the employee couldn't know when. This is the one where the girl actually reached for a gun when I was in there, and I jumped over the counter real quick, grabbed her, what are you doing, what are you doing? Then put the gun down, put the hair flex cuffs on, took all of the jewelry out of everything, which I knew where it was gonna be, where the big stuff was gonna be, I knew all of that. So that was a little bit of a plus. I didn't have to go in this one beforehand because I had the layout and I knew everybody who was gonna be there. I did have to know who's coming and going and what time the best time to do it and all of that. But, and I had to know the getaway. And the getaway on this one was in the back. And I'm going to go show you that, that area as well. And what I did the day of the robbery, after I knew the day I was going to do it, knew everything I was going to do and what time I was doing, I literally went around the building, and I'm going to do that in a bit, and I parked the car there with a fake plate, but I parked the car there. And then I walked all the way around and walked right in like I knew what I was doing. And that's when I did the robbery. And when I walked out, no one knew the better. Because the back end doesn't have as many people. That's where they put the trash out. But I also cased the back to see what time people put their trash out. I mean, you have to do that. But I stayed in this parking lot for a couple of weeks. Uh, knew everything that was going on in this plaza. And the plaza is pretty much the same as it was. Anchored by a major store. Uh, all a bunch of other stores all around that is normal that is what the major thing to rob is you do the plazas because when you do a plaza you know you think oh wow you know why would you do a plaza with all the people around that's what you want to do you don't want to be in, in a place where it's really alone and if somebody sees something out of the ordinary automatically they know something's wrong when you do it in a plaza they knew you know nobody knows they, they don't pay attention most people 
don't pay attention to what's going on around them. It's just sad as it is, that's what happens. Most people don't do that. Most people just go about their merry way and they think you're a normal person and I'm dressed normal. I was dressed in you know, a, a nice shirt and I had a, a button down shirt. I had my sleeves covered because I did have a tattoo on my arm. So I had uh, sleeves with rolled up. So you, nobody knew I had a tattoo or anything like that. So it was like pretty perfect the way to do that. And then, they, you know, it was funny because the description that came out of this robbery was a red-headed guy, I never had red hair, red-headed guy, six foot one and 170 pounds. At the time, I was about 250. I had brown hair, starting the receding hairline, uh, but brown hair and big guy. I had no hair, facial hair either. And I did that on purpose because I usually always kept facial hair of some sort. So since I had facial hair, when I did a robbery and I had no facial hair, by the time I even came back and I was around people, I had my goatee back or I had my mustache back, either one. So it, it was just thinking of the little details that matter. That's, you know, when I, when I decided to do untold stories, you know, I, I was kept saying to myself, how much do I tell? Well, listen, I think the more people know, the better. I think one, because if you're an owner of a store, you can start listening to me, understand what I do. I actually do some uh, robbery prevention. So if, if anybody wants to know that, we do that. I, do, I, I actually can go through a store and show what's in there, what, what makes a, a professional criminal not do it. I'm not talking about a smash and grab, a crackhead that's going in, smashing a, a window and taking a ring and running. No, I'm talking about the professional, me. The guy who's gonna go in and wipe you out and clean you out. Now, guys like this, they loved it because they got sold their whole store for insurance. So I don't think they were pissed at me at all, and they really weren't. And uh, that I was told by the uh, FBI as well. So in this store, when I went in, it was really all set up, done right, and it really put me at ease. But it, it's also the one that showed me, wait a minute, there's a lot of money in this. I made $150,000 cash in my pocket. 150000 cash in my pocket. And when you walk away with that kind of money in, in, in a week or so, yeah, it's pretty good money. I don't care who you are. So that's exactly, you know, what really got me going on what I do and, and stuff like that. I mean, I remember sitting on a bench right near that uh, Publix, had a bench out front. I would sit there and just watch and just watch. And I'd watch what time it opened, when they closed, because I was figuring out the best time to do it. And that's when I figured out about the, the glare. And again, as you can see right now, I'll bring this even closer. You can barely see in this place. You can barely see in. And, and I'm going right up to it now. And you can barely see in that store because of the glare. But the glare was a lot worse in the morning. So when you, when you think of it like that, you say to yourself, wow, I get it now. I get why it's its own defense. You know, I used to watch jewelry store owners put display cases. I used to laugh. I said, man, they're, they're, they're covering it for me. They're literally covering it for me which I don't think was a smart move, but they did it. And you know, you learn, uh, you teach them, you hope that hopefully they learn not to do that. And that's what I always hope for. But anyway, this is, this was one of the, the major ones here. And this is the one that kicked off Larry's robbing of jewelry stores. And again, this is the plaza, the whole plaza right now I'm showing you. And it's a pretty big plaza. So all the way around. So you can get an idea of, of the size of this plaza. And these stops are here. So, you know, it was just like it is. But you want to know what's going on around you. Everybody did. I mean, if you're good at what you do, you, you, information is king. I always tell everybody that no matter what you do, information is king. Never forget that. All right, let me take you around back. So here I am in my RV. And that right there, looking through there, is where the, the jewelry store is on the other side. And I actually walked all around this building right here and into there when I had to come in to get the robbery. I'm going around back right now to show you where it was, where the actual, uh, I stayed and cased the joint from that part. That's what I'm doing right now. So uh, driving around here, is, <laughs> again, this is bringing back memories. So here is the back of the jewelry stores, but not yet, you gotta go around the other thing. So I walked around this whole Publix. I walked around the whole Publix, ready to go with my uh, pillowcases in me, my 
you know, my gun in the back, the, the BB gun in the back of my pants. And I came to this road here, which is back behind the jewelry store. Okay? So this is where it is, and here is the area. So I ended up, I'm going to show you right where it is. So right here you knew there's mailboxes, there's a couple of stuff back here. And as you can see, there's cars parked all over here. And as you can see, right here. So we knew what store it was, the number, and you watch that to see when they're coming out. And you just parked here for a day or two to see who's coming and going. And most employees parked back here. So you know who is there. Uh, obviously, I, ha I had an in on this one because I knew what was happening. I knew what time it was. So that's, that's how you go to the back end of the store. And that's when I walked out. I just took the pillowcases and dropped them in the trunk. Came straight the way I'm going now. And going right out, I went right back to my house. Uh, in a uh, way I showed in a, a previous video where everything started and then I made my plans to go to New York from there uh, Had everything set up as well to go back to New York. So that is exactly how we did things uh, In casing a store from this end of a, of, uh, of a plaza. That's exactly what we did everybody. So This is the way it went and this is how uh, jewelry robberies go or people who know what they're doing they plan and uh, you know, I always tell jewelry store owners or people who own businesses, be alert what's going on around you. You'd be surprised how many people don't know. All right, everybody. Now we're going to the next spot. One, my where I kept my limousine and my clubhouse. But this right here, just showing you, is an auto body place that was owned by my friend Bernie. Bernie was a mobster from Cleveland. Cleveland. And he's the one that, uh, he was an old timer at the time. And I was the one of the young bucks, young and up and coming bucks. And... He used to kind of, we used to talk a lot, and we had great time, Bernie and I. He was a good guy, and I'm sure he's dead now. He was, back then, he was 70, and that was 30 years ago. Anyway, Bernie and his son, Guy, they own this place. A big, big auto shop. I had cars taken care of there, a little under-the-table stuff as well. And uh, that's when my son hit the, uh, really funny story, my son, he had a golf cart, and my son gets in the golf cart, and we told him, don't, don't, you go, don't you get in this golf cart. What does he do? He gets in the golf cart, and he hits my car. Then he runs away, and I had to send guys to go get him. Really funny. Uh, he remembers that. It's a kind of funny story. Uh, but my warehouse, where I had a warehouse clubhouse, was around the corner, and I'm going to go there now. And I had that built out into being a clubhouse where I kept my limo and stuff like that. So here you are everybody, you can see uh, the weather turned bad on me, but that's okay. Right here where you see this truck is where I burnt the car. Uh, we're going to put up a picture right there, that's the, the area where I burned my car for an insurance job. Again, not things to do everybody, this is not, not the way to live your life, obviously. But coming around, and I'm sorry I can't get out of the RV because of the weather, but also check out right now. Uh, check out the warehouse here it is that you see in it the warehouse and it is open and as you can see there's a wall in the front because but there was a straight wall going back that whole way and that's where I had my three offices so the first office was like a reception area then the second was like for uh, like a bookie with phone and a desk and all that actually a couple of phones in there and then the third was where we had the uh, it was like a lounge. I had a pull-out bed, you know, like a couch with a pull-out bed. And it had a TV, had a refrigerator, and all that stuff. And you got to remember, back then, you were talking the early 90s. And in that, those days, we didn't have technology the way we did today, where you can have TVs and big screens. I had a big screen TV, uh, but it, it was different back then. The, the screens were different. It was itself a, a unit. It was just a whole different animal. But it was there. And that's the place where, when one time I had my rules. One of my rules in the, as, as a gangster was, if you didn't answer my beeper, or you didn't answer, we had beepers back then. You know, you could put a code in the beeper. 911, I think 411 was I love you or something. I forget, to be honest. I don't know what they were. 
But anyway, that's the place where one time I was looking for Junior who worked for me. And I love Junior to this day. Uh, Junior's a good guy. Uh, really is a good guy. He was very loyal. And Junior, I needed him for something. And here it was, I think, four in the morning. And my rule was, if your beeper went off and you didn't answer me, you better either be dead or in jail. End of story. So in that warehouse you're looking at right now, in the back where there's, sitting, there's a bathroom back there. We had the same bathroom, but that back area where they took the wall down, that area right there was where that office was. And in the side there where the, the garage door comes back, that long garage door, is where I had a bar at the end of the wall. There was a bar there. And then when I wasn't using it as like a party place, and literally had parties with bunches of people, because I had a bar with bar stools and stuff like that. I kept the limousine in there. I had a stretch limousine with a driver and all that. And I kept my stretch limousine in there. That's where that door, you know, the big garage door that goes up and down. And as you can see, it's got a door to come in and out of the place. So anyway, at this one night, you know, I couldn't get hold of Junior. And I'm steaming. I mean, if they had a video camera back then, you would have seen steam coming out of my my, my uh, ears. I walked into the... I was looking for Junior. I couldn't find him. And I walked in, and here he is. The bed is pulled out. And Junior is on the couch sleeping. At that time, I had a 357 Magnum. I go up to the bed. I pull out the 357, and I throw two of one or two, three shots, bam, bam, bam. I throw the three shots right next to his head. I mean, he flies up out of that bed. The, the, the look in his eye was total, oh my God. Oh, you know, I, 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 and I sat down and I said, if that ever happens again, I'm gonna blow your brains out. You don't dare do that to me because you don't know if I need you for something that's really, really serious. So you didn't do that. But, you know, it's it's great showing you guys my warehouse. The first, the robbery area and where I had a robbery. I'm going to be doing more of that. And showing you guys the actual warehouse and where a lot of crazy stuff happened. The parties and, and my buddy Fat Tommy. I love him to this day. And Tommy and I are still close. I still hear him. He's the godfather of my daughter. And, uh... So Tommy used to run the bookmaking operation. Tommy ran everything for me without his brains. And he was very, he, he could keep track of things. I was partying all over the place. I was crazy. I was doing drugs, doing that. I was just all over the place. I was with multiple women, you know, doing crazy shit, having orgies in that place. It was just nuts. I mean, we had some parties in that in that place that are just still off the chart. And I, you know, I was just looking up and I was wondering if they still had the air conditioned unit. Now, remember, I had this whole place built. No, what code or any of that crap or anything. I just had construction guys come in and build it out, and then even put a unit. I think it was a hot unit. Somebody stole a unit, and then sold it to me. I think for two hundred and fifty dollars, and it was like a major unit. Because I had the ductwork and everything above the, uh, uh, in those offices. Those offices didn't go to the ceiling, obviously. They had a roof on them, like a normal, like, nine-foot ceiling. And so I had ductwork, and they actually had a five, I think it was a five-ton unit on the roof. So it was air conditioning this whole place, all done illegally, obviously. And I just wonder if that is up there too, but it was amazing what we did. You know, my buddy Joe was just telling me the other day, you guys are gonna be hearing from Joe, he's like one of my dearest friends from back then. And Joe's an old guy now, he's over 80. And just what a great guy. We were just at lunch and we were talking and he started laughing. He said, yeah, Larry, remember you said, oh, that was your place, you wanna keep a low profile. And you had everybody, had parties going. You were so crazy back then. Oh my God, those were the days. All right, have a great day, everybody. Talk to everybody soon. Stay safe. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't, please subscribe to our channel. You know it means a lot to all of us. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe.